thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, today my topic is on clean energy technologies for residential buildings um the theme for this uh, uh, this year's world consumer rights day is clean energy transitions so what they meant is that uh, we need to educate and then create awareness among the consumers about uh, clean energy technologies so that we will be reducing the uh, greenhouse gas emissions so with this concept they have uh, uh, given this uh, topic uh, th this particular theme so based on that one i would like to give some um, appraisal about the clean energy technologies that we can adopt uh, in our uh, uh, houses so next slide please so first of all let us try to understand um, what is meant by clean energy and of course uh, many of you might have heard about the green energy as well am i right yes <coughs> yes uh, uh, do, uh, can any one of you answer my question that uh, what have you understood about green energy energy does, does not give any adverse effects that is clean energy adverse effects means what kind of effects any any like from fuel fuel that okay uh, let me give the clarification green energy means mainly that is uh, um the, the main source is the natural uh, uh, resource from which we obtain the energy so like a sun sun yeah. is the natural resource so from that we will be uh, um, creating um, electricity or uh, heat energy so uh, those are nothing but the green energies so here uh, green energy is not, uh, green energy doesn't emit any greenhouse uh, gases or else carbon dioxide emission would be less whereas clean energy means zero emissions would be there so there is a hairline difference between a clean energy and green energy but if you uh, if you go across some of the definitions and then the um, concepts that are given by different authors that you could see that uh, it is used synonymously also the clean energy and then green energy so anyway this is mainly obtained from the renewable resources so that means that it can always be replenished so we know solar energy we know wind energy and then geothermal energy biomass energy so all these things can be replenished and then from there we can obtain the um, uh, uh, energy uh, from which we can uh, uh, transmit that particular thing for various uses in the uh, houses so uh, next slide please so um, when we see the history we have been dependent on fossil fuels for the past several uh, years and then decades and uh, the use has been increased over a period of time and then releasing uh, various greenhouse gases and which are affecting the environment which are polluting the environment so that is why this uh, particular theme has been taken that empowering consumers through clean energy transition so that uh, um, as a responsible citizen we would like to uh, reduce the pollution emissions so uh, this uh, uh, theme as i said that it mainly had been adopted to uh, increase the awareness uh, uh, among the consumers to be more empowered and then they push themselves to adapt these technologies for a faster and then uh, cleaner environment so new electronic devices and then appliances have been available in the market like a robo blinds washing machine etc which are all um, many of them are connected to uh, internet so we have that uh, iot uh, adaption even in the household sector but not also in commercial sector so when iot uh, th um, techni um, devices are available and then uh, which are providing the real time data and then making it much easier to understand uh, and then lower the energy use next slide please and when we look at the statistics india is the 
third largest global emitter of carbon dioxide the first one is china and then though we have uh, per capita emission is less but then still it is in the third place because of the uh, huge population and uh, one of the india's most sensitive and uh, social environmental issues are particular uh, matter emissions are uh, more and uh, uh, when we look at the recent data over 1 million premature deaths are related to um, household as well as the ambient air pollution next slide please that is why the government of india had come up with uh, various uh, policies to bring uh, 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 a sustainable energy solutions um, um, and then uh, through the use of renewable energy sources that we could reduce these emissions uh, both at commercial and then um, domestic sectors and the next slide please so um mainly um, uh, clean energy comes from uh, solar uh, sun is the main source and uh, the rise of solar photovoltaic uh, cells are um, uh, increasing and then which are generating the power and then it is so spectacular because the way it is generating and then helping us to reduce the uh, carbon dioxide emissions so the resource potential is very high and ambitions are very high and policy support and technology cost reductions also have quickly made it as a, a cheapest option and then adoption has been increased so here i would like to give my own case also um uh, when i have moved to an independent bungalow or uh, five years ago so that time when we wanted to install this uh, so, uh, solar photovoltaic uh, uh, um, technology um then uh, that time it has costed 2 uh, lakhs so then we thought that okay we will give a thought and then we will wait for some time it is so surprising um uh, uh, i think after 2 years it has been completely slashed down and then we could get it for uh, 90000 so that was the time in my community so we have got 43 villas out of which 50% had gone for this uh, um so to, um, solar photovoltaic uh, panels so we have installed you won't believe though we have been dependent completely on all electronic gadgets even in the summer also uh, even if three acs are running and then uh, all electrical gadgets are being used in the house still my um, bill is coming to only 130 uh, um, uh, minimum and maximum is Three uh, hundred rupees. So you can imagine the kind of uh, um, power that we can uh, reduce, and because we are only generating our own power, and then at the same time we are reducing the pollution levels also. Next slide, please. So, government of India, with these uh, things only, I mean, with these points in the mind. so they wanted to encourage and then promote these uh, uh, technologies so they have set a target of a solar installed capacity of 100 gigawatts by 2022 and then um, um, it, this this could be achieved with the cumulative effect of uh, efforts uh, by all the states in the country and southern states are ahead because uh, um, here more um, solar power is available and the telangana is the second leading state with an installed capacity of 3.2 gigawatts and there is a pipeline of solar projects with 200 megawatts capacity um, uh, that also is being happening in the uh, state so can you go to next slide please yeah so uh, you could see here there are uh, 10 top indian states in solar installation so uh, when you look at the picture um, Uh, the karnataka uh, karnataka has got 24% then followed by telangana 16% uh, andhra pradesh and rajasthan are at equal level that is 11% and um, the other states are tamil nadu gujarat uh, madhya pradesh maharashtra punjab and then uh, uttar pradesh so th these are the states uh, which have got in, uh, in the solar uh, 
um, panels being installed. The next, please. So you could see here the prime uh, sources of clean energy are one is solar energy, as I said, that where the heat of the sun will be converted into uh, um, uh, renewable energy. And then uh, hydro energy, again, um, where we, uh, we will be converting uh, or else we will be uh, um, producing the energy from the water and then usually from the rivers and then tides. And another third one is the wind energy. So uh, where wind power, mainly you could see that uh, wind energy is more in Gujarat compared to other states. And uh, so the from the turbines that we are generating the electricity. And the last one is biomass energy. Here, uh, the most common types of uh, that biofuels that we are using, that is ethanol and then biodiesel. So both of them are representing the first generation of this biofuel technology, uh, again, which is um, a clean energy uh, resource. So then, next slide, please. There is another concept that is isothermal energy. So it is the um, energy which is derived from the temperature consistency or equi equilibrium within the system. It has gained popularity in the recent years. Uh, due to its uh, friendly and then cost effective nature. So be, uh, uh, by using this one that we can reduce the carbon footprint and then lower the energy as well as we can um, uh, sustain the uh, living practices as well. Next please. Uh, then another concept is energy efficient windows. Um, here, the windows are becoming more and more popular in the residential bec um, buildings because they are able to reduce the energy consumption and lower the heating and then cooling costs. And uh, th th these are designed to prevent the heat transfer between the outdoor environment and then indoor environment so that they can maintain a comfortable indoor climate um, uh, I mean, so that without depending on any um, um, uh, heating and then cooling systems so that we ourselves can maintain the uh, temperature. And these energy efficient windows can be made from variety of materials uh, like insulated glass, low MVT coatings, gas filled paints, um, etc. So which have got different levels of insulation capacity. The next one, please. So when we look at the advantages, one is uh, that we are generating energy on our own without uh, producing any uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that uh, And also we are reducing the air pollution. Then the second one is uh, diversifying energy supply so that we need not depend on imported fuels so that we can reduce the carbon footprint and create the economic development and jobs in manufacturing installation and repairing or maintenance, etc. So uh, there are several smart home devices which would help uh, in reducing the carbon footprint. So let us see one by one. The first one is smart thermostats. So uh, they make our homes much smarter and then more energy efficient. So what they do is that they memorize the uh, schedule of the user and energy consumption patterns so that everything will be integrated with the heating and cooling system. So obviously, so when we feel that the temperature is high, um, then automatically it will try to cool down. And then when uh, it is uh, very cool, because depending upon the outside environment, obviously inside that uh, house also the temperature would be either cool or hot. So uh, depending upon that one, then the thermostat automatically will be either increasing the temperature or reducing the temperature. So that is how that it would be working. And it shares the monthly notifications about the household uh, uh, energy consumption patterns. And then it will give some tips also uh, to save energy and reduce the electricity bills. Then comes smart power strips. So. Um, uh, they have a circuit uh, inside which will be optimizing and conserving the power when there is a power cut in the house. 
so they distribute the charge uh, among the circuits where devices can be charged and act like a multiple circuit uh, power bank um, where we can uh, add, um, uh, in which we can charge all our laptops pcs phones and then maybe um, uh, tv etc and then unlike conventional power strips they keep uh, uh, consuming energy even after the device has been charged so that they will be stopping the the charging will be stopped automatically uh, even if the device is plugged in but otherwise what happens when the device is on then uh, many times the power supply would be there and we always say that uh, to reduce that uh, supply we have we always have to remove the um, plugs uh, from the socket otherwise there will be some uh, flow of electricity would be there so uh, to uh, i mean that happens in the conventional strips but whereas in the smart strips that doesn't happen so then next thing is the smart sprinkler systems so uh, this can be used for the home irrigation purpose when we have small lawns and then gardens so that uh, water usage will be uh, optimized and then it will reduce the wastage also and uh, smart they have sensors so that will be analyzing the weather and soil condition and accordingly then the water will be sprinkled so um, when when it can anticipate that there is going to be a rainfall after some time or else uh, how much rainfall is going to be there and then how much water is retained in the soil so uh, depending upon that one then it will be working automatically and advanced sprinkler systems also integrate with the voice control devices and uh, it will let the user control the direction of the water sprays um, so that uh, certain parts uh, will not get underwatered and then certain cannot be having overwatering so that is how that we can always uh, like the way we use alexa so when we ask alexa that to increase the volume or decrease the volume or play this or play that and also in that manner even the sprinkler system also yes. can be uh, sorry alexa stop sorry so th that is how that we can use uh, the sprinklers also uh, and uh, homeowners can also conserve water by getting the notifications about the water shortages in the neighborhood or else if there is any drought situation so accordingly then the settings also can be changed for the reduced water usage next one please then another thing is the smart composters this is another important device that we require um in the residential sector because the disposing of waste has become a big menace um and we, neither we have space to uh, incinerate or else to uh, bury it so both the problems are there especially in the developing countries uh, where the space is less and then the population is so high so that is where this will work out to be uh, much better um uh, it can indirectly uh, i mean when we are uh, uh, disposing this organic matter too much then definitely it is increasing the global warming so um, uh, because uh, when it, when when we are doing when we are going for the land filling then it will be releasing the methane gas into atmosphere so that is how again it is increasing the greenhouse gases so uh, this composter bin has got some sensors which will be detecting the level of waste and then presence of moisture content and uh, it will come with some specific fe features where the kitchen waste uh, without generating any odor uh, in the kitchen space automatically it gets composted the next please and uh, another thing is the smart bulb so uh, indoor lighting uh, contributes to the major uh, energy consumption in any household so it can be reduced very effectively with the help of these smart bulbs which are again iot uh, based uh, technology um, uh, which can be configured and then controlled remotely so they have motion sensors that automatically shut down when the room is unoccupied and um, Uh, as you move on then automatically it will be switched on and as we move away then it will be switched off so that is how that we will be reducing the 
energy levels then comes smart uh, meters so here uh, unlike uh, uh, our electric meters they which simply record the energy consumption on utility devices smart meters they, i mean uh, uh, these smart meters will give a real time electric electricity consumption at short intervals so that every time we will be getting the notifications and then we will become alert in reducing the electricity consumption and they have a two way connection connection between the meter and then select, uh, central electronic system so the readings from the smart meters are more accurate than the conventional meters and everything is automatic automated so that we uh, human interference is not at all near, i mean it, uh, it is very very minimum the next one please so as i said that um, uh, the clean energy main source is solar energy so let us see how the solar energy is being um, used for the clean energy technologies so before that one we, let us try to understand what are the benefits of the solar energy so it is obviously renewable and non polluting low maintenance and it prevents global warming and obviously it saves the money as well okay next one please so when you look at this picture you can see that in how many ways we can use the solar energy um uh, for various purposes one is uh, for heating that is solar heat collector is there in fact uh, initially when solar energy was adapted in the residential sector we used to depend uh, dependent only on this heat collectors mostly these are connected to the um, geysers and then that is how we used to use but now the thing is changed now we are more moving towards the photovoltaic cells so which will be generating the electricity and then that is being connected to the central grid uh, central electric grid so what they do they uh, uh, i mean in a month whatever we generate the electricity so everything will be noted and whatever we consume that also will be noted so if we generate excess electricity and then use less uh, electricity than what we have produced so that will be kept in our store so that next month maybe due to rains or anything that if we are unable to generate as much electricity as we have generated in the previous month so definitely that uh, uh, the previous month's excess thing can be used so that is how that it can be balanced and moreover in our country especially in many of the states we could find that uh, 250 to 280 days we could see that um, very good solar uh, energy is being um, uh, uh, being absorbed so that is how the, uh, it is generated so that is why that uh, the photo, um, now we are moving more towards the photovoltaic cells so when we generate electricity through this one so that is being connect uh, i mean because of that solar electricity only that all our um, electric gadgets are being run okay so uh, you could see that it can be used for space heating water heating and then to run all kinds of electric gadgets then the next one is uh, that uh, these um, these are uh, these so solar photovoltaic cells are interconnected to form the inflexible module and so which is called as solar panel and then the life span of the um, solar panel is 25 to 50 years and they are made of silicon a semiconducting material so which will be converting the light into electricity and uh, these are used for conversion of solar energy into electric current and uh, uh, one more thing is that minimum maintenance is required for this so you could see that they will be fixed in a slant form and then it definitely collects a lot of uh, dust over a period of time because it is open to the uh, sun so that's why once in a month at least that thing has to be cleaned that if the dust is cleaned uh, properly with the normal broom also so um, uh, definitely the Uh, absorption of the solar energy would be very high so we can maintain that level if we can uh, clean the panels regularly next one please 
and in the market you could see that there are three uh, solar panels are uh, available depending upon the type of material used one is monocrystalline and there is polycrystalline and the third one is thin film um uh, among all these things monocrystalline has got the highest life span um whereas the lowest is uh, found in thin film um, the uh, efficiency wise also monocrystalline is very high so you can see that uh, as the cost is high then definitely um, as the efficiency is high then definitely the cost also will be high um so the same thing is applied even here also the monocrystalline cost is little bit higher than the other two uh, panels next please so um how this panel system will be working so it is converting the sun's energy into electricity and uh, the um a, a Uh, this electricity will be uh, in, enabled to the power uh, electrical items and then it passes through the breaker box to outlets in the building and items such as refrigerator and lamp will be plugged into these outlets for power and that is how that we we will be self sustained and then we can use the um, solar solar energy and uh, of course um, this is uh, being used even in other sector also for telecommunications power packs domestic lighting systems then uh, for integrated buildings for pumping railway signaling battery charging stations even for uh, street lighting also we are using this one offshore uh, oil drilling and one more thing is uh, even um, uh, even in um, uh, petrol bunks also they, they on top of the shed the, on top of the roof they are installing these uh, solar panels and then they are generating their own electricity so here are some applications so that is uh, um solar solar electricity can be generated and then heat energy can be thermal energy can be create, uh, generated and then we can heat the buildings and solar ventilation is possible solar lighting is possible uh solar portable solar transportation solar furnaces um uh, i would like to say very proudly that um, my uh, colony uh, has got solar furnace uh, fencing and uh, even uh, uh, solar lighting as well as of course the solar uh, panels in many of the houses so uh, that is how that uh, we we can use the solar uh, energy in many ways in the uh, household sector and water heating was very common uh, since many decades but now that is reduced once the photovoltaic uh, uh, panels had come into uh, uh, subsidy and then when it is available at a lesser price so uh, but otherwise uh, the solar water water heating system also is very very common in many of the hostels and all we find even in the residential buildings also we could find this thing and it uses the rooftop cell to absorb the sun heat and then transfer it into the water tank and another application is heating the swimming pools obviously uh, this is uh, more uh, useful in the cold climatic conditions uh, and then cold countries but uh, not in all the uh, states of uh, india and water is circulated to a collector where it is heated by sunlight and then pumped back into the hotel and it starts from 20000 rupees onwards and the solar heating for the spaces if you see that uh, it mainly powers the radiant floors or pairing with the forced heat air uh, so that it will be heating the house and uh, um, this can uh, heat the houses in winter and mainly in uh, places like himachal pradesh that uh, this is more apt and um, and some parts of uh, even um, uh, western side uh, and uh, when you uh, again we need to consider the window placements as well as the building materials also so that we can um, keep the house very warm in uh cold climatic conditions then solar electricity it is increasingly accessible and it is typically installed on rooftops and it generates the electricity to offset the owner's usage and then excess production to the electric grid as i have explained what uh, we are doing in our houses so you could see here in this picture that even if it is uh, 
um, a sloped roof um, or a tiled roof uh, even in that house also we can fix the solar panels so that is the advantage so on the left side also you could see that it is like a, a kacha house and in spite of that one the solar panels could be fixed separately and then they can generate the uh, electricity and uh, um, the cost of um, rooftop solar system has been uh, slashed down so that is coming to 1 uh, 1 lakh rupees uh, subsidy is 30% and um, depreciation cost also obviously we need to calculate but then whatever it is but then we will be able to uh, save 50000 rupees with the subsidies and all and we will get back our investment um within 3 uh, 4 years depending upon the usage of the electrical gadgets and next one is uh, solar ventilation so solar attic fans will reduce the burden of uh, uh, heating ventilation and air conditioning uh, by helping to cool a home during the summer and then reducing the uh, electricity bill and um, the price for this one is uh, 1500 to 2000 rupees per uh, sorry for 1500 to 2000 square feet then we need to spend at least 40000 rupees so uh, mostly this is ideal for the commercial uh, sector then solar lighting and they are found everywhere that even in the um i think mostly in us we have found uh, uh, this uh, um the small solar chip is fixed in on top and then a glass is a bulb is fixed and then that can be just inserted in the ground and then even on the pots also that can be uh, inserted and then during day time it will be absorbing the solar power and then night time it will be uh, glowing so um and uh, so this uh, we we can use it in our um home gardens and then maybe if a terrace garden is there wherever it is there uh, open place then there we can use this one and also for the uh, street lighting we use the uh, solar lamps they are very inexpensive and readily available with uh, basic uh, and um, b- basic to high end designs so the cost is ranged from 300 onwards then i think solar water heater we have already discussed um mainly it it is used for bathing washing and then cleaning purpose and then it is uh, fixed on the rooftop um and uh, it can be used a- at any time of the day because we have seen that even in severe winter also in um, especially in hyderabad um Uh, november december and january uh, we have uh, uh, cool temperatures but even then that we could have lukewarm water um uh, even at the night time then uh, another thing is solar powered outdoor lights so these are highly efficient because they make maximum use of sunlight and then we have seen them using in the colonies uh, street lighting and as well as in the parks also and uh, they 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 are equipped with a small uh, solar cell and rechargeable solar battery um, which supplies the power to the light uh, uh, light the bulb at night time and they can be used to illuminate pathways swimming pools and etc and in fact recently one more uh, addition has come that is uh, uh, they have uh, sensors also so um, throughout the night they will not be glowing so only when some people walking uh, uh, in that area then suddenly it will be on and then once we move away then obviously it will be off so like the way electrical sensors are working so that even solar sensors are also fixed and then they are available then comes the solar rechargeable fan so uh, uh, these are best suited for the outdoor areas uh, where they require an extra fan in the summer and then or else when there is no power outlet is there then we can go for this one uh, they are powered with the solar panels and then they don't require any electricity to, to run they come with an ac power adapter so that fan can be charged with electricity when there is less sunlight next is uh, solar portable uh, smartphone chargers 
so these are compatible with the various devices and then they can be used to charge mobile phones tablets laptops etc and uh, they also have got a, a solar panel which will be charging the power bank and once the charge uh, gets exhausted then again it has to be kept near the sun um, or else near a window wherever the sun ra- sun rays are falling so that uh, it will be recharged and uh, they, they come with a charging port which will be using the conventional electricity so we have done a project on this and where we uh, try to uh, promote this one as an enterprise in the rural area so that even a housewife can have this um, uh, smart uh, charger and then she used to charge 1 rupee for uh, mobile charging so that is how that she could make money so the investment is very minimum but at the same time that she could uh, um, earn money from that one then next is um uh, flashlights so th- these are powered by built in solar panels which can be charged obviously uh, with the solar energy only so as a backup they comprise a separate usb cord so that it can be charged even with the uh, conventional electricity also so that it has got both the um, uh, types of uh, ports and then uh, um with the smart monitoring system um and regular notifications they they can study and then improve the user behavior patterns so that uh, the energy can uh, energy waste can be minimized uh, every day so depending upon the natural light available uh, or else artificial light available so if there is a uh, the amount of darkness will be deciding that how much it has to flash um, on and off okay then uh, comes uh, there are some portable solar devices uh, that is phones tablets all these we are using um, which are running low on a battery so uh, these uh, portable solar charges you could see because uh, we we use mainly the power banks which are completely running uh, with the electricity so Uh, here the solar power pv chargers are also available in the market so it, which can be carried with us and then we can uh, charge the laptops or mobiles so they charge with uh, five pins and then the cost uh, runs from 300 onwards the next one is the solar transportation so the um, uh, of course this is not related to the residential sector but then this is another application you could see that where we can uh, Uh, use the clean energy technology so uh, it may be the future but then with the existing applications that uh, mainly in the bu- on the buses trains airplanes cars etc so on this uh, the p- panels can be fixed and then the electricity can be generated so apart from this one then we have solar cooker solar oven solar cells furnaces fences cell phones wearables music speakers tablets thermostats and then uh, lanterns etc and uh, solar dryers solar um, radios are there then mini fridges uh, then rechargeable flashlights so there is no end to it when you look at the application of the um, solar energy uh, getting converted into the usable form so but the main drawback of the solar heating devices is efficiency is very low compared to the devices which run on electricity especially when motors have to run so that is where that we find that it will not be having that much electricity so uh, uh, this is uh, another uh, um, uh, benefit that we could see that uh, in crux we can say that the solar energy can be used for home safety home security home convenience entertainment then uh, for uh, home access control and then wifi network so that is the door locks then uh, automation video door phone so anything can be connected to the uh, electricity that is generated from the solar power and the next one is the smart uh, home hub 
so uh, here the internet of things um, uh, uh, which connect the smart home devices like doorbells lights locks security cameras thermostats then the cleaning equipment um utility equipment all these things um uh, can be uh, connected uh, and the, and they can be uh, used at homes and then but then still they require some kind of control mechanism so most of these smart home gadgets have their own app to operate and independent of the protocol they will be used and then if at all they require some kind of hub can be used in between so that um, it can be connected so uh, uh, what uh, why i wanted to include this one is that um, even this solar uh, run technologies can be connected to the internet of things so that is where that we can extend the application of uh, solar energy then uh, next one is uh, even smart security cameras uh, uh, we, we we can use them with the iot technology and um, uh, we, we can improve the security system in the house so uh, the next one you can see that a complete list and comparison of the interesting and noteworthy of iot devices and then some uh, products with the features you can see here the iot devices support the expansion of internet connection beyond the usual standard devices and they are they are purely integrated with the high definition technology and which can help us to communicate and interact with the over uh, internet and we can control them even from the remote place so uh, that is how that i mean the future is that that we need to expand the use of this solar energy um uh, uh, solar energy technologies uh, which can be connected to iot and then that is how that we can get the maximum benefit out of it so what are the factors that we need to consider before any um, thing to be adapted one is the geographical location that is very very important because how the building is oriented so depending upon that one then we know that how the energy is being received on the terrace or else on a balcony or whatever it is on the roof and then building design and orientation and the resources and infrastructure in that particular area budget and financing options and finally maintenance is very very important whatever it is that the if maintenance factor is not there all these things will become a uh, waste so uh, uh, to conclude this one um, i could say that if the clean energy is the future uh, uh, hope for the um, reduction of the uh, uh, conventional energy consumptions and uh, uh, as the Uh, population is increasing day by day so definitely this is the greatest uh, um, hope uh, to reduce the conventional energy and then conserve the energy and uh, also it will be generating the uh, green energy and then which will be um, reducing the environmental pollution and then it is uh, uh, more uh, eco friendly and um the, and also it will be sustaining the environment that is very very important and um, um, more and more we are also uh, understanding the importance of these uh, um clean energy solutions and then to maintain the uh, um, economic um, environmental conditions uh, and then the role of consumers in or else the role of individuals in maintaining the Uh, sustainable environment is increasing day by day so that is how that uh, um, we are also gearing up towards the clean energy solutions but then which needs to be enhanced over a period of time so then this is the only solution that we have and i didn't touch more on wind energy geothermal energy because though they are the sources but then um, Uh, the application of wind energy and uh, um, geothermal energy um, bio diesel all these things are more applicable in the commercial sector rather than in the residential sector 
so that's why i confined my presentation only to the solar energy devices which can be easily adapted in the household sector uh, i hope i could make it clear to the audience and uh, now i request all of thank you, you thank you give Dr. your uh, vijaya for yeah. very knowledgeable useful and fruitful lecture